party people. Welcome once again to the Party of One podcast, the actual play RPG podcast where the gaming table is always set for two. I'm your host as always, Jeff Stormer, and this week on the show, it's summer and we're heading to summer camp, which is to say we are joined by a uh, beloved friend of the show, Keegan EXE, for a game of Campfire Scouts. This summer, the thrills never end. Pack your bags and head down the long winding road to your home away from home for a week, swimming, climbing, merit badges, friends, and of course, campfire stories. But what about the strange smoke coming from the woods or the claw marks on the trees or the cabin that went missing last summer? I'm sure it's nothing. There must be a rational explanation, right? Campfire Scouts is a game for a GM and one to six players about a fantastic summer camp experience where you explore both the magical and mundane adventures that await. Uh, it is such a joy. Like we had a really magical, wonderful experience playing this game. I adore this game. I've been waiting for it to come out for a while because like I've just been excited for people to experience it. I think that we told a really lovely story that like really hit my heart. I can't wait for you to hear it. The game is currently available uh, on itch through the plus one EXP store. You can find more information about that at plus one EXP itch.io, or you can check the show notes for more information. And with all that said, let's go ahead and throw it over to me in the past so that he can get started with the show. Take it past me. Thanks, future me. I am, listen, I say that I'm excited a lot, but I am so beyond excited to be sitting out with Keegan EXE. Keegan, thank you so much for coming on Party of One. Yeah, thanks, current Jeff. I guess past Jeff now. but <laughs> Current Jeff at the moment of this recording. And you know what? Current Jeff doesn't get enough credit, so I appreciate you taking the time to thank me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm crazy excited to be here. This is so much fun. I am already so, so excited. Um, So real quick, at the top of the episode, why don't you take a moment and let our lovely listeners at home know about what we are playing this week, as well as anything else you've got going on that you might want them to know about. Yeah, this week we're playing Campfire Scouts. It's a game about um, like kids going off to summer camp where it's a uh, fun summer camp during the day and then at night uh, weird supernatural shit happens. Um, yeah, um, and then you can find me online. I design games. I do pretty much weekly streams of other indie RPGs uh, and all that. And you can find all that online at like keekandexe.com. Hell yeah. I am so excited to play Campfire Scouts today. Like, I've been looking through the game. I am giddy with excitement. So why don't we go ahead and kick things off? Like, talk us through how we start the game. Give us the... I'm going to hand you the wheel. Uh, give us the the rundown. Yeah, so Campfire Scouts is usually a GM'd game. Um, we're going to play it gm list today, and we'll just take turns setting scenes uh, when that comes up, because great, like 70% of the game is gm and, you know, it'll work this way. Um, cool, but to start, we're just going to go ahead and start building our campers. Um, I have pre-built mine because I have been sitting in front of my computer for an hour because I don't, <laughs> I don't have a great concept of time. Fair, <laughs> fair, um, fair. But let's start building your camper. Um, to do that, we're going to split five points across your stats. Your stats are craft, chart, confront, conquer, and comprehend. Um, I guess I could describe those for the person at home. Uh, craft is used to make uh, traps, improvise weapons, and make pulstices to treat minor perceived harms. Uh, charts used to chart and travel in the woods without being caught, create maps, and avoid getting lost. Confront is used to find allies, talk down threats, and avoid getting scared. Conquer is used to run, jump, hike, and overcome physical threats. And then Comprehend is used to make sense of like trail markers, learn secrets of the weird things happening in the woods, and discover insidious traps. And I have five points to spread across. Then they all start at zero, or do they start at one? They all start at zero. Okay. I'm envisioning what I'm envisioning what ten year old Jeff would have in his, and I'm doing the exact opposite. I'm playing the <laughs> furthest from what did. So I think I'm gonna have zero in craft. Okay. And then I'm gonna put two into two into conquer, two into confront. No, one into confront and two into chart, with zero into comprehend and zero into craft. Okay, this is gonna be, this is gonna go great for us. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> and then we're gonna choose a background. Um, your background's gonna give you what like starting badge you have, which is uh, gives you access to like your skills in the game. Each badge has a um, like an active ability and a passive ability, and it'll also give you an extra point to one of your stats. Uh, I am going to choose. So my options are the nerd, the jock, the cheerleader, the veteran, the artiste, or I can build my own background. I'm going to go with the veteran. I, 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 I like the idea of a, I like the idea of a wilderness enthusiast is how I will describe them. I like 
you know, the, for lack of a better way to put it, uh, I had friends that were this kid, the consummate camp kid. Yeah, that's the exact vibe when we did that one. Yeah, that's the like there were there were there were the kids that were like if you ask them what their summer plans were, it was camp. If you ask them what their spring break plans were, it was camp. If you ask them if you just chatted with them for a while, every story would take them back to camp and that is the the vibe that I'm leaning on. Perfect. I went and grabbed the cheerleader. Um, so each of our backgrounds is going to give us an access to one point. I got either confront or conquer. You'll get either chart or comprehend. I'm going to put mine in comprehend. That feels good. Okay, perfect. And then you'll either have your not tying badge or your trekking badge. Let me see what not tying is. My gut says I want to go with, I think I'm going to go with trekking. I think that feels like what I want this care. Not tying is full. Not tying, like I say that, and I'm immediately uh, reverting because the idea of connecting two items is very fun to me. Yeah, they're all good. Is the thing <laughs> they're all good. Like they are all good. And the idea of ha- of the idea of like this being a kid, like the the vibe of like kid. I'm thinking about kid who is into camp, and I feel like kid who is into camp is different than kid who is into the woods. Yeah, very much so. And so I think not tying feels more like I am into the structured activities provided to me by a campground setting. I'll be here making friendship bracelets. I'll be kayaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not I'm going to camp because I want to go out into the woods. It is I'm going to camp because I like structured fun. Yeah, I I feel this child like a lot. <laughs> I truly do. Like I started in a place of what's the furthest from Jeff I can get, but a and lot then, of Jeff bled <laughs> into this. Then you just made Jeff again. Like it just it it you know what, Toad is hip, this is just a Jeff. <laughs> you know what? This is the format of the show, I think. But you know, uh art reveals who we really are. Um wonderful. Great. So um so you got not tying badge so you'll be able you always have a rope on you and you'll be able to connect two items and then i find it's useful to look at the rest of the badges and just like think of one you might want because a bunch of the requirements for getting future badges um so the game doesn't level up like experience you can do requirements to get badges all of them have like take a class during the day phase and then do something else and they'll each have uh like three things under it so it's useful to know like what should i be trying to do during the day um so it's worth just thinking about uh, another badge you might want as All well right. i've got my i've got my 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 badge that i want i'm excited to find out what it is later <laughs> yep no i i looked through the there were two of them that like i i kept coming back to but i think that the one that is the most the, the one of them is like a lot more one of them is here's where I'm at today Keegan one of them is legitimately like oh there is like juicy material for campground activities that turn into weird uh like haunted camp stuff which is ideal for the game the other one is significantly less cool <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the vibe. You got it. Uh, we're good. Yeah, I, I know the one that I'm chasing after, and it's the much less cool option. <laughs> um, wonderful. Cool. Um, well, with that, we're going to move straight over to the opening ceremony. Um, opening ceremony is the first day of camp, but it's also when we talk about things like safety tools. Um, so this game uses lines and veils. Um, generally playing this game, I have a line on explicit harm to kids. Um, yeah, me too. That's uh, That feels right. Harm to kids and... My my go to line is always harm to kids and non magical animals. Like okay. if it's a dragon, like I don't mind it getting into a fight, but like I don't want to see harm come to a dog or a cat. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Um, this game's definitely built around. Um, I have a line on harm to children. Um, so you'll see that instead of having HP, we have bravery. Sort of, um, you're not really getting hurt. You're just getting scared real bad. And I think that's Love perfect. It. That's great. <laughs> that that feels true to the source material. That feels very true to the like, you're never really in danger. Yeah. This is how much of this is actually supernatural. And how much of this is these kids just have a real big imagination. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of the magic that I really like. I like leaning into. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so we have safety tools out of the way. Next, we're going to build a campground. Um, I've already sent a camp map. It's just very basic. Um, here's some places. Uh, here's generally what the camp looks like. Um, because I don't think make, doing map making is going to make great radio. 
That's fair. No, that is that is uh, that is an accurate assessment. Um, but as a group, we should come up with the name of our campsite, and it gives us some examples here. Um, but you know, if you have if you have any ideas. I know that they're on the same list of six options, but something about Gully Ridge just sounds fun to me. Yeah, no, that rocks. Let's do that. Gully Ridge feels very satisfying as a name. Cool. So we already have the camp. Uh, so let's start some rumors. Um, there's a D10 table here. So I'm going to roll a D10 for me. I'm going to do the same. Um so i got the rumor there's an old stone wall or rusty fence along one of the trails what can you see through it on a moonlit night um which is just a great question that is (laughs) um so i want to say we're at camp gully ridge um yes i want to say this old um this old fence sort of cuts across like the water on the beach a little bit and if you see through it, you can see some fins sometimes, and they look suspiciously sh- like shark fins, to me mm. at least. Um, you know, I'm sure if I talked to a counselor, they'd be like, there's just big fish. Calm down. This is a river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rumor that I rolled is uh, there is a swamp or drainage ditch to be avoided. What song can only be heard when it's quiet here? I am thinking it is um, on an especially quiet night when it is especially hot and humid out you can hear i'm gonna i'm gonna get specific here because i think that like my immediate answer evokes a vibe that i'm not interested in Mm -hmm. i think it is very specifically raucous bluegrass okay it's not into that it's not um like it's and it's not ominous bluegrass like it's not it's not the deliverance banjo it is it is you hear like um like 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 banjo but also washboard and jug like you just like the sounds of swinging bluegrass music is what you hear on the wind okay yeah no i love that like there's uh, a raucous party to it that i think is is some like reverend peyton nonsense happening out here yeah even stranger than if it was just like an ominous ominous uh single instrument perfect um and with that let's go ahead and we haven't named our i don't know how i don't have this in here but we haven't named our campers yet my name is uh desmond rambo thuellen but no one but it is important to note that no one calls me rambo (laughs) (laughs) it is important that if i if if you ask me what my name is i tell you it's desmond rambo thuellen (laughs) Yeah, and everyone's like, no "Okay, Desmond." No other single sure. person has ever said, "All right, Rambo." <laughs> um, I think on the exact opposite end of this, um, my camper's name is just going to be Greg. He Great. probably has the rest of his name somewhere, but he never introduces himself. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, perfect. Um, next we would normally build a schedule. We're just doing this as like a one shot, so we don't really need a schedule. Um. So we're just going to skip right past that, and we're going to move on to arriving at camp. As each camper pulls up to the campground for the first time, being dropped off by their parent or legal guardian, each player can take a turn to tell the group a little about the camper. Questions like, what sort of car do your parents drive? Did you show up in uniform? What's your state of mind? Have you been here before? What are you looking forward to? And what strange detail do you notice about the camp as you pull in? Um, And I don't mind going first here, so... um, I think Greg pulls up. Uh, his mom's brought him. He's in a like purple '90s like Geo, it's a real old, real busted car. Um, Greg is already in uniform, um, and he's excited. This is his first time coming to camp here. Um, he's very much looking forward to. I think he's looking forward to getting out on the water some. Um, I think wherever Greg's from, this is probably the first time he's really gotten to go to like the river, or the ocean, or wherever we are here. Um, and then what strange detail does he notice as he comes in? Um, <laughs> as we pull in, and I rolled for this, <laughs> um, as we pull into the parking lot, um, and I'm saying goodbye to my mom. I sort of one of the lights in the parking lot here has just a pu- an unusually large pile of fingernails at it. Great, that's great. <laughs> um, 
Greg's like trying to say goodbye to his mom and he keeps turning and looking at it being like, is that? Okay, um, yeah. So I'll be, I'll put on my, is that really fingernails? <laughs> I think um, as, Gre- as, as Greg is saying goodbye to his mom, I think we pan up into the tree line as like emerging from some some brush already in a tree the like grease paint under his like on his cheeks um like uh like tracker hat on um like emerging out from a tree in like the in a camper uniform but like an extra like fedora hat <laughs> leans out and is like muttering does it, like look side to side and is like i've arrived <laughs> and then there's a honk, and we see uh, Desmond's parents, <laughs> as Desmond has broken away from his parents, and, like, immediately climbed a tree and started, like, scouting. <laughs> Desmond's parents drive a, like, old 50s station wagon, and it's got bumper sticker it's got like stickers from national attractions i think desmond's family is a road trip family okay yeah i think the family pastime is road trips so it's all and it's all like roadside attractions like stickers on the car dad is wearing a fishing vest and a bucket hat and a t-shirt that says eat sleep pontoon (laughs) and gives a big wave like have fun son (laughs) Yeah, I love the idea that he's come here straight from like the world's biggest rubber band ball. <laughs> exactly. Yes, it is. Uh, it's it's wonderful, and like they drop off Des, and then they go to the next attraction. Like they drop off Desmond and go to the attraction that's just for adults. I don't think the kids are ready to see the world's largest cricket just yet. Maybe in a few <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Oh, I love him so much. I love Desmond. <laughs> I love Desmond and I love Desmond's family a lot. <laughs> um, the strange oh. thing that I see when I arrive. Okay. This is this is very funny for a thing that Desmond alone notices. Yeah. Desmond in the tree is like pine trees leaning at a 42 degree angle. <laughs> Why are the Grape, trees leaning? Grapevine, like grapevines dangling from, from branches despite that not being work. So I think Desmond has noticed crops growing in strange patterns, but like it is very, it is the, it is the, it is the, it is the, te- the tween version of like Rorschach's journal from Watchmen of like the trees are at an odd angle. The grape fly, the grapevines are growing along trees where they would not normally grow. Uh, <laughs> like there is a there is a circle, there is a circle of corn growing in a precise circle with none around them in any direction. Like these things that like it's just rattling off these details as as he kind of makes his way through the camp to the main ground. Yeah, no, that's that's perfect. Um and I think our campers here we get like a few minutes to meet each other. Um, we get Desmond and Greg meeting for the first time. They're in the same, uh, they're in the same like general cabin. Uh, we have the same counselor, stuff like that. But uh, I, I do need to de- I think I think Greg probably gets to the room the the the, the cabin first because I yeah. imagine Desmond like takes his time to get in. And when I do need to emphasize that like. The voice that I've been doing, the voice that that greets Greg is, "Oh, hey there! <laughs> it's nice to meet you. I'm, De- I'm I'm Rambo. I'm Desmond. You yeah. can call me. You can call me Rambo. Uh, thanks. Hi, Desmond. I'm Greg. It's Des- Desmond's fun. <laughs> yeah, perfect. That's what you said, right? <laughs> yeah, that's yep. Great. I'm Greg. <laughs> I just I just needed I need I the voice popped into my head and I was like I need to put it. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was the right call. It was the right call. <laughs> um, so our campers spend the day, you know, getting their stuff put away. Um, it's already starting to get close to night. And we move directly into the campfire phase, which is the bread and butter of this game, really. Um, okay. So each player leaves the daytime phase with our strange detail. Um, and then we're going to collaboratively tell a campfire story. Um so because there's just two of us, each of us is going to choose, I'd say, two of these. Um, okay. Little Mad Libby bits. Um, 
and we're gonna you know sort of make up a monster that lives um around this camp love it and they're they're the the low key tech here is there's six of these things we have creature sense nature phenomena motivation uh, and then a camp specific rumor um, so you can roll a d6 and then a d4 to just easily get um, these if you don't feel like choosing one I always love rolling dice yeah okay same. yep I got I got a real good one I uh, so I think um. I think we're in conversation, right? And and I think that we're kind of doing what I think young tweens, like older tweens, young teens do at that age where at that age where being disaffected is cool. Mm-hmm. We're like complaining about things that we actually think are cool and fine. Okay, yeah. Uh and I think um maybe it comes out in converse let me ask you does it come out in conversation that you mentioned the pile of fingernails oh yeah absolutely because <laughs> uh i think that uh desmond is like oh i i heard a, I heard a legend about something that makes their their nests in the wood out of fingernails and 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 bundled up bundled up piles of hair oh my god is that the monster, the one with the electronic devices all turn on when it gets nearby and the displays and readouts show, ooh, um, what do they show? Ooh, they show, um, they, displays and readouts show uh, time and date on them. And it's said that the time and date is when you're going to die. Oh, that's real good. Um, oh, I rolled camp specific rumor. Um <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, I know what I want this to be. I heard my cousin uh went to this camp, went to Cully Ridge, and and she said that it was uh it was a a seismologist from the from the research center over the hill uh that was swallowed up by the earth and uh, the screaming the screaming electronics is trying to warn people of uh of uh of the mouth of hell opening up and those fingernails are uh that's the that's where that's where they tried to dig their way out of hell oh wow i heard that in its presence plant life bends into strange shapes it never returns fully to normal and over time it only grows stranger like fractal patterns <laughs> I think hearing this, hearing <laughs> this, um, Desmond, we get this brief shot of Desmond from Desmond's point of view, mm-hmm. pulls out this gigantic, sick looking knife. It's got the serrated edge on one side and the super sharp thing. It's got one of those like military like handles that you have on a knife, jams it into a log and starts muttering. I've seen plants take weird shapes around here recently. I've seen this. I've seen this with my own eyes. There is something here that is altering plant life. The evidence of this and what is act. Then we cut out of uh, Desmond's POV and has popped open a uh, has popped open a Swiss Army knife Mm -hmm. and dug the knife like partially into the log, but it's kind of just sagging over. Yeah, because the 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 blade (laughs) of the (laughs) hilt of it's just sort of bending. It's, yeah, it's just, it's just in the process of breaking, and Desmond's uh, cool, whispery monologue is actually, oh, I, I saw those, I saw plants, they were weird shapes, and, and, and they were bending, and the trees were bending, and grapevines, now the thing about grapevines that you need to understand is that grapes are sort of a creeping plant, they sort of operate in this way, uh, they move up, and so very seeing them dangle down was like very, very strange, it was very, very strange, <laughs> and it's just unloading. <laughs> Yeah, Greg, I think, is just, like, heavily nodding along, pretending any of this makes sense to him. It's like, yeah, the uh, gr- grapevines, grapevines, trees, bending. Mm-hmm. 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 I, I could have maybe seen that, I think, maybe. I saw that. Uh, yeah, I mean, you've had to be, you gotta be a pretty talented, you know, nature tracker to see that in the wild, but uh, I could probably show you where it's happening. And if, uh, if, you wanted, if you wanted me to show you, I could show you where that's happening. I yeah, could. Yeah, and I... I think there's a counselor nearby who's like, no, no, it's, we're about to go lights out. Maybe you can look at it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, sure. <laughs> that's, that's great. That's very good. <laughs> 
Perfect. Um, and with that, we are going directly into the night phase where we, surprise, surprise, don't listen to the counselor. And we sneak oh, out anyway. Oh, absolutely. Without a shadow of a doubt, we don't listen to the counselor. Yeah. Um, so play during night phase alternates between we'll take turns sort of framing scenes and then we'll have these unseens between them, um, which is stuff going on at like a rival camp, maybe across the river. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start with, let's start with the rival camp real fast. I'm going to do the Moonlight Sonata one here. Um, so Redwood and Dolphin are two counselors who were put in charge to, uh, uh, put their charges to bed. There we go. For the evening. Uh, they sneak off alone and creep to the lake with no supervision, intent on diving in for some late night fun beneath the stars. As Dolphin and Redwood approach the Moonlight Lake, what shows us that they're not supposed to be here? And I think, like, the obvious thing here is there's, like, a danger no swimming sign. Sure, absolutely, 100%. Um, and, like, sort of as we see the scene, we see them just sort of run right past it, and it just stays in foreground, and we see them run into the background. Yeah, I like that. I love that a lot. Um, perfect. So, yeah, uh, as we head into the night phase... Um, yeah, I want to go back and look at those weird trees. <laughs> I got to look at the weird trees and I got to look at these piles of fingernails. Yeah. Um, so the pile of fingernails is in the parking lot that's right over next to the forest. So I think it makes sense if we head straight towards the parking lot. That makes sense. I think that feels right. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll frame a scene first. Um, so I think we are luckily the the on our little map um our cabins are right next to the parking lot so we don't have to sneak past the counselors which is great here um and we just sort of get a shot (laughs) everyone gets put to bed we wait for a little bit we wait for the counselors to stop talking um and we wait till we you know see the campfire go out pull out a flashlight i'm like hey hey are you up hey are you up still um Desmond tries to do the, tries to do like a Spider Man or a Batman like dangle and just collapses. <laughs> it's a gigantic ruckus. Stands up. Yep, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Shh, they're gonna hear us. Look, I want to go. I want to go see if the fingernails are still there. Um, pulls out a very visibly broken Swiss Army knife. <laughs> I'm the in. one from earlier. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so we're uh we i will head us over to the parking lot i'm just gonna go ahead and make a call this a chart roll we're not very far from the parking lot it doesn't seem like it should be very difficult to find this i'm just gonna set the difficulty at like an eight i sure. feel like that sounds fair that sounds fair um cool and i rolled 18 plus one so yeah i can <laughs> i can get us back to where that pile of fingernails was no problem um we sneak out of the cabins. We head over towards the parking lot. Um, yeah, and what do we what do we find there? I think we find that the the bundle of finger of fingernails has moved, and it Ooh. has moved in the middle of one of these circles of corn. Like there is a there's like in uh, it's like against the wood. Like, right at the the edge where the forest meets the parking lot, right? Mm-hmm. Like, in this kind of tall grass area where the forest meets the parking lot, there is, like, a circle of, let's call it, like, full, let's call it wheat. I think wheat feels right, because wheat is the kind of thing that looks similar-ish to, like, grass or tall grass that you might not see it immediately if it weren't, if it wasn't, like, full size. I think there's, like, a circle of wheat and in the middle of it, that 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 bundle of fingernails has moved in directly into the center of it. Yeah, I think on top of that, the wheat sort of around the circle has been sort of squished down. Um, yeah, just so that we get an easier shot of it. Um, but yeah, so we get over to the parking lot, and I'm like, it was right here, it was right here. And as we sort of pan our flashlights over to the to the grass, you can see it squished down. And as we get a look. Yeah, uh, horrifyingly, the pile of fingernails has moved into the grass. I hate it. Uh, I, as Jeff, hate it. I think Desmond is on top of the world, but I need that <laughs> noted. <laughs> um, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not out of my mind. Fingernails don't move on their own, right? I'm sort of like staring down at my own fingernails. Not unless, not unless they're uh, 
Unless they're the legendary, they're the legendary crawling fingernails of the Great Abyss. But uh, that's not, that's a book you'll read when you're older. Uh, I I think Greg's like, how old is he? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Um, I think that like, I think that what Desmond is going to do is like crawl over, is like hiding among the tall grass, like crawl over the... uh, towards the crawl over towards the the circle of wheat and start like poking at individual stalks and kind of like seeing the ones that kind of have been like stamped down or like warped and kind of like start to study them for like footprints or like some symbol that something did this and that they didn't do that on their own yeah this feels like a comprehend role to me this does feel like a comprehend Cool. Yeah, let's set this. We'll say the difficulty is like a 10 on it. I'm going to roll a d20 and add my comprehend, which is one. Perfect. That's a three. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. um, Yeah. So I think as you are sort of poking at these, uh, I think instead of not doing it well, the thing that happens is as you're poking at them, we hear a sound deeper in the woods. Okay, yeah, like, that feels good. There's, like, a twig snapping, um, and maybe, like, a... <sighs> uh, um, and and uh, I think by the time I, we if, get our flashlight up, there's uh, maybe just, like, a moving shape, but nothing else. And if I can throw... Uh, if I can throw uh, an added added complication... Please. I think Desmond uh, hears this, jolts up jumps fully off the ground into the middle of the of the crop circle landing on or like adjacent to the fingernails and <laughs> such a like fully like disrupting the arrangement like i think i think even if i land next to the pile it's kind of like landing on a pile of leaves and they just kind of start flying everywhere so i have like fully trampled whatever this is which uh, if this was done with any sort of intentionality, is the worst thing that can be done in this moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think on top of that, I let out like a little, eh! um, not not a super loud scream, but enough that I'm going to move our heat level up um, just a little bit. That'll bring our heat to a one out of six, um, which just means in the future, if we get scared or are making a lot of noise, uh the there's a chance the counselors come and try to find us okay um perfect yeah so we we saw the fingernails we heard a sound deeper in the woods um let's do another part of that unseen Um, let's do it so we see redwood and dolphin uh dive into the water and begin their playful swim they have some things they wish to say but they're scared to share what words are on the tip of their tongues and why are they nervous to say them I think they're nervous to say. I think that, like, we see them through a window of a cabin. We see them through a window of a cabin, and um, there is, like, separate, two separate college admission letters. Each of them open, but, like, each of them open, each of them we can see one is labeled Dolphin and one is labeled with Redwood's name. And... I I think I'm actually going to leave it blank. But yeah. I think that they have both opened their college admission letters from and we can see that it has the same seal, right? Like it's the same school. Ooh. And they've both opened their letters, but they are each individually nervous to tell the other the results of those letters. And so we're watching them play and we're watching them play in this very innocent like playful way. Like we're watching them like like in the peak of play. While these like these very you know heavy college admission letters are are sitting on the other side, yeah, no, that's perfect. I love this. Um, great. Then with that, we'll flash back over to where our campers are. Uh, and we're still here in the wheat. What do we want to do from here? Um, I think the only thing to I think the only thing to do is to send into those woods. I think that I think that getting his wits about him i i think like kind of stands up brushes himself off a little bit 
this being uh i'm picturing a cartoon here and so i'm picturing does that visibly some fingernails go flying off <laughs> does that classic like cartoon like rubs himself down there's smoke and like, <laughs> and, like smoke dust and around him vi- and like yeah fingernails illustri- flying. <laughs> just bouncing off um <laughs> uh stands up takes a step forward and like markedly without the the rambo voice is like we should check out what that is because there's something in the woods and we should check out what that is. Yeah, we don't we don't want it getting closer to the camp. No, no, yeah. we gotta there are younger kids at the camp. We gotta look out for the for the younger kids. Yeah, we have to be brave about this. Let's go. Hmm. <laughs> um and it sounds like we're gonna go deeper into the woods I here. I think we are, yeah. Um I feel like in this case, I'm following you. So if you want to roll a chart roll. I will roll a chart roll. Um, and we'll see if we either n- know where we're going or if we get hopelessly lost in the woods. Um, we'll Des- see if we set this at like another 12. All right. Let me give this a roll. Desmond, baby, that's a one. <laughs> <laughs> so that, makes, that makes it a total of a three. Cool, cool. Love this for us. Um yeah so we 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 get into the woods get a few steps forward and i turn around flashlight on and the parking lot's not there anymore no like desmond what's happening here (laughs) the the parking lot was right there um um if you're supposed to be able to follow the north star and uh is the north star part of the belt or is the north star (laughs) Desmond, you were supposed to know this. I was following you. I I, I know it. I I know it. I just and then we hear. Ah. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Um. Yeah. Let's go ahead. We're we're lost. We're scared. Um. Let's go ahead and roll. Uh. Let's go ahead and roll confront to try to avoid getting scared of uh, okay. both being lost and whatever this is in the woods. I'm just gonna set this at a ten. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's a 10 exactly. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so we keep our wits about us here. Um, we're we're lost, but we're not losing it yet, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so so I, we, we hear that sound, and I, I think I flip around with the flashlight again. Um, ooh, and actually I think as I flip around with the flashlight, um, the light on it sort of starts to get brighter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, Des- Desmond, that, that thing messed with electronics, right? That, that, that monster. Oh my God. 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 Um, 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 uh, I am going to use both my passive and active ability at the same time. <laughs> Hell yeah. Let's do it. I <laughs> am going to connect two items. <laughs> That is rope mm-hmm. and a tree. <laughs> and I am building. I'm doing the only logical action when you are in the woods and something that may or may not be a supernatural menace is stalking you. I am building a snare trap. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I love this. Um, yeah, you just build a sna- snare trap. No need to roll for this. This is great. Um, like, okay, so... So, so if the monster steps, then that will catch it. That is correct, and then we can we can study it, we can analyze it, we can interrogate it. Okay, or we can run, or we can run. Like if you need to run, like I understand. I don't need to run. I wouldn't need to run, but if you needed to run, like we could run. No, if you wanted to run, I'd come with you. But I I, don't need to. (laughs) I mean, I I would want to run, you know, to warn the others that we have, and to sort of maybe like let them know that like we have captured the thing. But like you know, you could also just run back. We could both, you know, if you ran back to the cabin, I would run with you. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) But it would also be to tell the counselors. Yeah, no, I wouldn't be running because I was scared. No, we, we were not scared. We would be running to tell the counselors. Yeah. Okay. We have to lure the monster. Right, yes. What does the monster eat? Does it eat fingernails? No, it, make, it makes things out of fingernails. It makes a nest out of fingernails. What does it eat? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, huh. 
I think as we think over how to bait a terrifying woods monster, uh, I'm going to run back down to the bottom of this page to get back to another unseen. Um, So a voice is is heard carried across the lake, singing in an ethereal voice and promising to fulfill the counselor's every desires. If they just swim to the lake's heart, uh, what's promised to each of them? And I think knowing that they both got the college admissions thing in right now, I think the voice across the lake is promising that they will, that there's, there's a way they can stay together. Mm, um, mm-hmm. And what exactly that promises to each of them is probably a little different, but um, you know, if they just swim to the lake's heart together, everything's going to be fine. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, and so we see them start swimming across the lake, and as that happens, we cut back to our campers, who have, I'm sure at this point, figured out how to how to lure a monster in. Um, so I would love to do something, I would love to do a, a double action real quick. Yeah, please. Because I, I, I rolled a four-sided dice, Ooh. and I think um, we're sitting and we're watching and we're debating like what it wants, and I think... Um, leaning forward we kind of see the the shadow the shadow of the like i guess safari like i don't even know what you call that kind of specific fedora hat but like <laughs> the shadow of it falls over desmond's eyes and it kind of turns his eyes into batman eyes for a second yeah perfect uh and he give in in the voice goes i heard a legend that people say that it wants to devour the souls of the people that it catches but really it just wants to warn them and give the it just wants them it just wants someone to listen and to to be there for it so i think the best way for us to lure it in is to sit out in the open which is not a scary thing and that we can we can do that because i'm not scared so we could could do that Ooh, i have an idea so if you sit out in the open i can i can camouflage myself I'll like cover myself with twigs and leaves. That way it 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 won't be scared of us cuz there's only one of us then. Okay, okay. I think we can do that. I think that works. I think that works. <laughs> so I'm going I'm going to make a craft roll here to try and I'm to I'm going to make a confront roll. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um let's see let's set both these at 14 and just see how we do here. I got exactly a 14. <laughs> cool, cool. So I got a 3. <laughs> Great. I like the idea that uh if, if i can set this this if i can describe this for a moment please <laughs> i picture this is one of those like foreground background shots mm-hmm. uh, desmond is sitting cross-legged looking at this trap and whispering to himself it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine greg has your back it's going to be fine. And in the background, we see Greg jumping into a bush. You jump out of a bush as some birds fly out of the bush and chase you around for a bit. Like, you try to jump into a tree hole, some squirrels, cha- like, and it is now you are just being chased in a circle by squirrels and birds. And just making the most ruckus and utterly, like, failing to be in any sort of a camouflage position. <laughs> perfect um yeah i think on top of that as the i I jump in the bush um the the birds fly out the squirrels jump out i'm scared i jump out of the bush i shriek a little um i went ahead made another heat roll to see if the counselors hear us um they do not so our heat goes up again um but that means they're not going to come stop us either (laughs) um Great, yeah. So <laughs> you're you're gonna act as bait, and I am badly hiding in a bush here. Um, and at this moment, do we have one more full scene after our fourth unseen, or is that the end of the night? Uh, we have one more full scene after that unseen. And then I think like our closing moment is like a shadow starts to fall over me. As we flash back to our fourth unseen, we hear the snapping of a flare trap or the snare trap. Like we hear the like crack whip uh, swing of a branch. Like we hear the trap go off and then we flash over to our final unseen. 
Yeah, perfect. So Dolphin and Redwood are snapped back to reality suddenly as they are intruded upon by Dusk, an older employee of the camp, shining a flashlight their way as he tries to discern their identities. <laughs> the pair flees the lake but stops for a quiet moment alone before splitting to their respective cabins, heart still pounding. In this second of liminality, what do they do? Um, I think as we... Oh, no, this one's you. Yeah, what do they do? <laughs> What do they do? Um, I think in that moment, they they have an entire, in the way that you do when your heart is pounding and like you are, you are, you are processing that adrenaline rush and then that adrenaline dump, mm-hmm. they both fire off everything that they wanted to say to the other person in just one rocket of a of a message about like i think uh do we think that they both got in do we think they didn't get in like what do we think now at this moment is the situation as far as the uh as far as their respective or does it even really matter and they're just they're just shouting over each other i think in this moment we discover neither of them made it in um, but both thought the other had. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So we hear both of them like, I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Wait, you didn't get it. I didn't get, I thought you got it. Oh my God, this is such a, and like they are, we are hearing the both of them in stereo, just rattling that <laughs> off at each other for a good, like 10 seconds. And then they breathe. And then we hear, uh, the older counselor again. And then they, they're like, talk later. And then they both like, we see the puff of smoke and they're gone. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Um, And with that out, we hear the snap of the twigs as your snare trap goes off. Um, And what do we see in it? I think it goes off. That just works. Um, (laughs) And sitting in front of you, I guess probably like upside. I think the most exciting way this happens is it goes like around a foot and it's like hanging upside down by a tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Just wanted to make sure we were on the same page with that trap. <laughs> um, and I think you're face to face with whatever this is. I think this. I think I I like the idea that like at least some of what we had heard is entirely accurate. So this is like. Uh, like very unmistakably, like a zombified or a ghostly or a monstrous, like ranger seismologist, like study or like they're in like a like a dress shirt with the double breasted che- uh, breast pockets and the little epaulets on the shoulders. It's like a short short sleeve shirt with the sleeves rolled up. But the shirt is torn. They are like very obviously like a ghoul or zombie version of a park ranger or a, or a researcher. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, it's also terrifying. So I think we should both roll confront real right. right fast and not immediately lose our nerve. Um, and let's just set that at fourteen again. This this is real scary. <laughs> well, it's my turn to roll a three. <laughs> I rolled a 13, so I'm regretting setting it at 14. Um, yeah, so I think we're both going to lose. Let's say we both lose a point of bravery here. Um, All right. That'll bring me down to three because I quietly moved down earlier. Um, and then I'm going to roll. Where does our, our, what does our bravery start at? It starts at five. Okay, yeah, then I'm, I'm also, I am at four. Perfect. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and roll our heat. We just want to roll a two or higher or a three or higher. Um, and I rolled a six, so we're good. Um, I think I, I certainly shriek from <laughs> my terrible, my my terrible little hiding spot here, and I'm like, we should get, we should get, we should, we should, we should, we should get the counselors. Let's go. I, 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 Greg, I have a confession. Yeah, I'm really scared. <laughs> Say, <laughs> I'm glad that we had this moment. <laughs> and I think we haul ass out. Oh of yeah, the we are, we are. St- we, it is um, the cartoon. the 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 animators of this particular sequence are clearly doing a, a Sam Raimi Evil Dead uh, creature cam homage mm-hmm. of us running. Like we're seeing it from the perspective, but like 
We then camera flashes back, and the zombie researcher is very much still just dangling on the tree. Yeah. It, uh. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we get back into... I'm screaming the whole way. Uh, oh, yeah, 100%. So I think as we get back, we've we've definitely awoken the counselors at this point as we bust out of the woods. Um, and I think as the counselors come get us, we're... we're exasperatedly trying to explain there's a there's a monster there's a zombie in the woods and we caught it with a rope <laughs> you know like uh, okay did we give him caffeine tonight no um n- there's nothing out there. <laughs> um i and i think there's a particular moment i would love to throw like uh, i like i think at this moment like the counselors like put us to bed and i think there is uh, like one more moment because mm-hmm. I think like we calm down and I do think there is absolutely is I think there's a moment like right before dawn where like we calm down both look at each other and we're like we gotta we gotta go see it again right we gotta go back in the morning <laughs> gotta go back in the morning yeah when we're well rested it won't be a scary when we're well rested you're right you're right it's because we're tired yeah uh and I think do we see what do we see and what do we see there in the morning? I think when we go there in the morning, there is a there's a trap and there's like maybe a little bit of fur or something on the rope um, mm. or like a little bit of fabric or something. But the counselors went out there after us and they said there was nothing out there. So when we go out the next day and there's nothing out there, it's like it must still be out here somewhere. And I think uh, what we hear, I think what we see um yeah i think that there's just fur like there's clearly nothing here and we're like it's definitely still out here right like it's gotta be and i think uh what we uh, i i this ties into uh this ties into my my merit badge that i want perfect but this is also a very good like closing coda for the character yeah I think that I am first in line for a ham radio course the next day. <laughs> and we do see like a long shot of like Desmond like awkwardly fiddling with a ham radio. But like at one point, like like clearly like messing with frequencies and whenever a counselor walks away, are you there? Are you there? Checking in, checking in. Uh, breaker one nine, breaker one nine. Re- zombie researcher, are you there? Are you there? And at one point, like, a signal, like, starts to come back, and we just see Desmond's eyes go, like, super wide. Yeah, that's a perfect place to leave this for me. <laughs> that feels good. I'm so happy. That's game. Keegan, thank you so much for playing this week. Yeah, this was so much fun. Thanks for having oh, me. Oh, I love this game a whole, whole lot, is the thing. Um, I am smiling ear to ear. Thank you so much for coming on and playing this. I it had the best time. Yeah, this was this was great. I'll come back anytime legitimately i will take you up on that offer also because you're just a delight to play games with and i can't believe this is our first time playing a game how is this our first time playing a game together (laughs) truly um what a crime anyway uh thank you again for 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 coming on and playing this game i'm smiling ear to ear uh why don't you take a moment and let our lovely listeners at home know about where they can find campfire scouts as well as anything else you've got going on that you might want them to know about yes you can find campfire scouts online I don't know, eventually. It's not out yet. Um, when it is finally released, it'll be released through Plus One EXP, so you'll be able to keep up with it at either Plus One EXP dot com or like I'd say on Twitter at Plus One EXP, I, but by the time this episode this moment, comes out, I'm not sure it'll We're at this still. moment where like, yeah, I'm like, you can follow me on Twitter today. <laughs> this episode's not coming out tomorrow, so who the fuck can say? <laughs> Yeah, if Twitter's still alive, maybe follow Tony at plus one exp, um, and maybe this game will be out. And if he's not, go to plus one exp dot com. I don't know. At some point, eventually, and it'll be there. Maybe. Um, yeah, that's where you can find the game. Fantastic. Thank you again for coming on the show and playing this game with me. Uh, this was the absolute best time. And for now, I'm going to throw it over to me in the future so that he can wrap up with the show. Take it past me. Take few. No, wait. I got the bit wrong. How do I get the bit wrong after three hundred? <laughs> Take it, future Jeff. <laughs> thanks, Bass May, and thanks again to Keegan for coming on to the show. That game was such an absolute joy. Like, I I mean, I adored that game. Like, really captured this, like, big, magical summer experience that is so exactly what I wanted. 
I could play this game for hours. I mean, this episode brought me a lot of joy and like lightened my entire life. Thank you so much. Be sure to check out the game at plus one exp itch.io and be sure to follow Keegan over on blue sky at blister.city. Then provided it's still a fucking website, you can head over to Twitter. Then while you're on Twitter, follow us at Party of One Pod. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Party of One Podcast. Find us on TikTok at Party of One Podcast. Find us on Tumblr at Party of One Pod. Subscribe to our newsletter at buttondown.email slash Party of One Podcast. And join our Discord community at bit.ly slash Party of One Discord. If you enjoy the show, there's a lot of ways to support it. You can support us financially at patreon.com slash jeffstormer or ko-fi.com slash jeffstormer. You can give us a nice iTunes review, shout us out to a friend, give us some love on social media. You can buy some Party of One merch at bit.ly slash Party of One merch. Or if you're looking for more great podcast content, you can check out All My Fantasy Children, which is a character creation, storytelling, and world building podcast that I make with my best friend in the world, Aaron Catano Saez. We take a listener submitted prompt and spin it into an original fantasy character populating a shared universe one story at a time. You can also check out Yazeba's Bed and Breakfast, which is an actual play about a heartless witch, a cozy house, and the many people making their homes inside. Both of those you can find wherever you get your podcasts. Party of One is, as always, produced and edited by Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. Music for the show comes from the song Infinite Lives by Mega Rain, featuring the D&D Sluggers, and the Party of One logo is by Evan Rowland. If you'd like to inquire about advertising rates coming on the show as a guest or about press coverage of the show, you can email me at partyofonepodcast at gmail.com. And unless I am mistaken, that is all we do here. So until next time, thank you so much for listening. Remember to fight the forces of fascism every single day. Remember that self-love and self-care are radical and defiant acts of resistance. And as always, party on, everybody. Never gonna die.